so this is a beginner stage two and in the beginning of stage two you can can Continue to use the colors that you were using before. So I believe I was using um, these two colors here. Put them a little closer, and uh, and I think at one point when I was try trying to draw the eyes, I used this other color here just to kind of get a little bit of differentiation. But it's not a big deal. The reason you want to just use these two is just so you can perfect the location of things, the drawing, the structure, um, and then afterwards you can start thinking about adjusting the color, adjusting the temperature, adjusting the warm versus cool. Um, that's more or less in stage three and probably towards the end of stage two. And maybe even in the middle, once we start to um, articulate that mask, and that's what we're gonna do now. That's kind of what stage two is about. Really focusing right here and committing. And then we're going to, again, spider our web our way out of that area. So what I don't want you to do is to for example, focus on this eye here and then start to draw the ear because you might move the ear to the left or the or the right. And if you do all that work on the inner workings of the ear, you're just wasting time. I mean, you might be right, but most likely you're not and you're gonna be off and you're gonna have to make those adjustments. So that's why I just rough everything in around the head. And then now I'm going to focus in on the mask. Um, and I'm just gonna just, Remember where I was, and as I'm looking at myself, I'm just going to try to turn my head towards the camera. That's kind of what I'm doing. It's like that, if you can see in the cam. Sorry, if you can see in the camera there. Um, when I turn my head, though, I can't get the camera exactly behind my eyes. So, all right. We also want to make sure your head's not up or down. It's like kind of or remember how you had your head. Cause if you just go up a little bit or down a little bit, it changes everything. You can see under your nose, you see um, your cheekbone starts to move a little bit com in comparison to your nose. So you wanna make sure it's kind of right there. All right. Um, I'm looking at my eyeball and it's really close to my nose, but I can still see the tear duct. Actually, if I turn my head like that. My nose crops the tear duct just a hair. And I just want to make sure I have that established. All right. And I'm just gonna do a little work here. And then after this, I'm gonna to start to do the time lapse because it would be painful to watch me the entire time. But right now I'm trying to look at my eye. At the same time, I'm looking at the shape between my eye and my eyebrow, which is really thin. So you're looking at the sh adjacent shapes simultaneously as you look at the shape you're drawing and they make each other up. You can't have one without the other. So that's really important that you within the last project, the fabric drawing, you did that quite often. So you should be trained pretty well to see those differences right now. And I'm trying to use the corner here. I might even break this, break this ag again so I can get a sharp corner because I don't have these as pencils. Um, which is fine, you just have to know where the corner is. All right. So I'm basically just trying to throw um, my eyeball in a little bit. Still trying to get that little curve there though. And I'm gonna suggest the white of my eyes in a second. Now, I just noticed that my, the 
not the eyelid itself, but the skin above the eye right here, as you can see right, right here, goes out past the eye, probably about right there. And then it hits this and then it starts to go up. So my forehead might go in a little bit. I just noticed that real quickly. So I'm just gonna maybe make that suggestion now. You can kind of see that feels a little, little better already. So that's good. Um, now I'm trying to get where my eyelid is right here. And I'm using a corner to somewhat draw it. And it's almost a, it's not a straight line across. It's a, on a slight angle down and then it curls back in. Kind of like that. And I'm gonna put a white of the eye in, but I did allow you guys to use this white charcoal sticks in your, uh, that thing in here. But remember the white of your eyes are not really white. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to use, I'm going to continue using this. And if I need to lighten the value a little bit, I can use the white, but they're kind of gray. So it's going to be this with a little bit of blue and white. But right now I'm just kind of using this and, and I'm starting to cut over this way to shape the eye. So I'm using the shape that's next to it, which is the white of the eye to shape the eye itself. And now I'm going to try to put the skin near my tear duct. Just here. Goes down and then it kind of goes up. All right. Now I'm going to use this to go back on the other side. And if you need to do any work blending, that's fine. You can use the blending stumps because right now this is a little bit too small of a shape to use. Now I'll talk later about the shadow that's casted from the eye lid and also, also get more into the structure around the eye, um, the color within the eye. Right now, I just wanted to somewhat bring it one step further into cl clarity. And then after that, I can start to walk my way over this way. Um, that's saying my nose is here and this might shrink a little bit, I'm not sure. So now I'm gonna start to work this way. That's enough there. That's all I wanted to do. Starting to work this way. I, no I notice right here is a little bit um, thinner and the bridge of my nose or where the keystone is, where it meets the head is a little bit smaller. So that being said, that would be more accurate in terms of where that Not too concerned about blending yet. I'm just kind of making sure everything is where it should be. Now I'm going to start to walk my way this way, but I'm going to use a different color now because I can see this kind of dark shadow starting to form and I want to differentiate the two colors right now. So I'm going to go ahead and throw, throw that in. Now I'm trying to find where the corner of the eye is. Remember I rough this in and it's, it's going to have ebbs and flows. It's going to look like it's going a good direction. And then because you put something on, it's going to lose that, that line. So now I'm going to walk, it's called walking the dog. I'm going to walk from my bridge of my nose over to my, that dark shape. And then 
the white of the eye. Bridge of the nose, that size, that shape looks decent. Um, this is probably where my eye be begins. So there's that dark shape here that I just put in. And then I think the eye kind of begins around here. That's a little skin there. So, um, look at that again. So that's where the eye begins. That, that's that angle. And then within there is the white of the eye. This is kind of right here. So I wasn't that far off in terms of where the eye belongs. So again, I'm trying to locate the eye. You don't want to move the eye around too much. You want to make sure you commit it, this area, nail it, because you don't want to commit down here and then have to go back and move that eye up and down. You're never going to get in the right spot. It's best to commit to this first and then move down and up. That way you don't have to ever readjust them. But take your time here. It's really important that you take your time and just kind of locate where things are. And you also want to see how your eyeball is being cropped. All right, so that's starting to work out. There's this sharp light shape right here that I'm starting to define there. And if I ever have to, eventually I'm gonna go back here. And if I have to move this eye over to the left, just a hair, I can, but that's, I don't wanna go in any more there. Then I'm gonna go back here, tighten this up, and then I'm gonna go back here and tighten this up. So really take your time um and perfect this and then after that then you can start putting the, some like suggesting the eyebrows and then you start to get this likeness but for now i'm going to stop i'm going to um time lapse and you can see me probably working in this area quite a bit going back and forth back and forth okay um before i go to time lapse one thing i do want to say is that um the shadow or, or the value behind my cheekbone. I'm deliberately making dark, not super dark because I eventually want to put my beard in. Um, so I'm, I might make it like a mid-tone, but I know it's gonna be darker than that. But for now, I'm just making it dark. I don't have to worry about it. Um, and then that way I can focus on getting the edge of this correct. So it's just easier for me to think about it that way. And then I can really clarify this whole part. So right now, again, I'm just going to focus right here and here. Um, and I might rough in the bottom of the nose at times, um, things of that nature, but nothing major. And when you want to rough something in, it's okay to just, well, I mean, you can always draw, you can always restructure a line drawing on top. It's fine. But at some point you're going to have to go in and put the values that you see there. And I'm looking at my nose right now. It's a little dark here. It's light. Mid-tone here, darker here, mid-tone here, darker here, mid-tone. So it's constantly shifting. Those, those values and shapes are shifting and shifting and shifting. So you really want to find those. I'm looking at there's a dark kind of line here. Um, possibly I'm tired. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to, um, now I'm going to jump to time lapse. So as I was working during that time lapse, I started to use a wider range of colors here. And I'm just going to angle the camera down so you, oops, so you can see them. And I'll move my hand here. And I'll talk about my drawing here. But um, so the, the colors that, that I'm using, and you can, might be able to pick some of them up. I'm using them very delicately, only because I'm starting to locate where the eyes are and 
the shapes are and all that stuff. And I'm just taking one shape at a time. And I was hesitant to commit to where this eye was because I thought maybe I had to move it over to the left, just a hair. So I'm kind of like <laughs> inching to uh, complete more, but not, I don't know. So um, I still might have to do that. So I started to articulate the nose and then, because I wanted to draw a line straight up from the corner of the nose to see if it was in line or to the left of the uh, tear duct, which it is. So that seems to be fine. And, and I didn't like articulate the nose too much, just enough to get it going. Um, and then I'm going to go back into this eye here. Uh, once I do another phase, another round, and I'll tighten this up a little bit and I'll tighten this up a little bit. And then later on, you're going to find it very tricky to see how, um, uh, non pointy these are, but the uh, corners are kind of pointy. You have to use your corners and get in there and try to make sure you're touching that area because you are working in a small spot. Um, yes, you could sand these down and make it look like this. You can actually just get sandpaper and sand them down and make points. Um, but I wouldn't do that just yet. I would wait till the very, very end to do something like that. See how you want to get as far as you possibly can. Now, just to talk about what I've done here, I've been using these two colors primarily for my light values. And in some cases, there's these kind of like reddish, pinkish um, tones. And in other cases, there's this kind of like a yellowy tone. Um, and in other cases, there's almost like a green under my eyes, which I'm not too fond of, but whatever. There's like a green under my eyes. And remember, you only have one blue. So I mixed a little bit of blue with this and I smeared it. And I, I mean, just a little bit of blue, like 10% blue. And I put too much on, so then I put another layer of this on, and then I smeared it. Um, and I got a little bit of a, like a tinge of green. And that's what I was going for, because the more you study your face, the more color you're going to start to see. So I'm starting to put some of those colors down now. And then my face starts to kind of redden here. Um, and it could be because it's a cold day and I was outside or earlier, I'm not sure. Uh, so I took this bright red stuff and I put some red down but it's too intense of all the red. So I went back and I got my pink and then I, um, or my pinkish hue, and then I uh, put a layer of that down and I just smeared it in. I was like, all right, that's good enough for now. And again, you're layering this. You want to add more and more medium, but there are moments where the understructure line drawing, like these lines that I had here, um, are where I, I need a light line. So that's where I got my needed eraser. And then I would lighten those areas. I would go in there and I would take out kind of like what I'm doing now. You can kind of see I'm taking this out and that line exists there. And then I just go back in with my pink uh, hue here. And I'm just covering that area. And I think it gets a little kind of reddish and it gets a little violet here too, because it's in shadow. Because if it's red, and that's cool, which means blue, it's gonna become a little bit on the violet side. So I'm just gonna break my red, throw a little bit of red here, just to mix in with the, the white. Not too red, I was gonna look like Santa Claus or um, look at makeup on. But, um, and then I'm gonna go back in and then mix this. So I'm basically just putting a little red on and then I'm gonna go back in and mix this. And eventually I'm gonna put in some blue and then mix that. And then there's where you get your violet -y color. You can kind of see that it's kind of um, violet -y because I used a little bit of this, a little bit of this, and a lot of that. Um, and I'm just working that. I'm, uh, I'm not committing to it yet. I'm probably gonna make it darker eventually, but right now that's kind of where that is. And I'm now I'm starting to look in the cavity of the eye. And if you look in the, um, I don't know if you can see, let me angle this up now. Okay, I can't see the, you can see me now. Okay, so if you look in a cavity of my eye, um, it's, it's a darker value. And you can kind of see that I have this cavity here and there's darker values. And there's gonna be clear defining shadows and there's gonna be some areas that are not as clear. Um, so you wanna make sure you really grab those areas that are hard edges and clear contrast to value contrast of, of hue and make sure you get those in because they're going to help define um, the drawing and bring everything home for you. 
Um, I just noticed this. I'm using the pink though. Um, my eyebrow is a little high because I'm looking at the space below here. I'm just gonna throw a little bit of this in here. And I'm gonna blend it in. So for now, I'm I just like su suggest it. If it looks too mark makey, then I'll just kind of I'll do a soft blend, just a really quick blend. Nothing because I do want to see some of the marks from the line here. Allow that to stay. And don't feel like you have to blend everything and blend and blend and blend. Blending is gonna kind of take a take away from the, um, the, the drawing. So hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Um, and I will start again later. Another thing I forgot to mention I used too was this white. Um, I used it in the white of the eyes. Now I wanted to clarify that the white of the eyes are not white, but I use this because it does help to differentiate the eyes between the skin and all that stuff. But once I put a little white in, I also put a little blue in, and then I put a little bit of this kind of pinkish hue in because there's red in this pink and pink and blue will gray each other out. Um, and then the white will kind of lighten the value. So that's why I chose those. And then also in the top of the eye, there's a shadow. And I, t I get into this probably a few times. There's a shadow that's created by your eyelid. So if the light is coming from abo above your head, um, it's hitting your eyelid and then it casts a shadow on your eyeball. So I started to kind of put that in a little bit and it cast a shadow both on the white of the eye and on the color of the iris. Um, and I'll get, I'll, I'll clarify that more later. And at the same time, once I get the eye established, the outline of the eye, and I, and to do that, I've been using this kind of dark brown, if you will, just to just to have an outline so I can kind of see where the eye begins and ends and then eventually I'll tighten it, hit it up. But um, uh, then I can see how far the eyebrow is from the eye itself, the distance between the eyelid or the upper part of the, the skin here in the eye and the eyebrow, that's really important. Don't put your eyebrows way up here, really look. Um, and then there's one more thing too that I forgot to mention, um, and I'm starting to do it here now, but if, if you look at right uh, here under the eye, there's a thickness to your skin, the epidermis I believe it's called, but there's a thickness to your skin and it's about an eighth of an inch thick. And so the light is gonna hit that top of that plane, which is an eighth of an inch thick, and then underneath of it's gonna be dark. So then underneath of it will be dark, like right here. Can't get this thing mixed. So by doing that, you can kind of just barely see that I, I create this little sliver of light. Um, that's important because again, that's a thickness above your skin and it wraps all the way underneath your eyes and you'll see that. So there's not this dark outline outlining your eyes. It's actually a light line of the skin that's being hit and then the value of your white of the eyes starts um, and there might be a little bit of a, a dark like subtle line in there that, diff that um, creates a shadow between your eyeball and the skin. So it's tricky. There's a lot of information there. You really have to just slow down and study and look and try things out. Take it off, put it on, take it off, put it on, take it off, put it on until you get it right. That's what drawing is.